All right, can everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, yep. so this is just gonna look like a, a pile of mess, but we, we will get through this and it will make sense a little bit and, and it may need a second visit that we could even do just one-on-one -on -one to explain this a little bit better. But <laughs> the applications over here in this column, these are all made up. I just threw some product names in there with it and it is what it is. The product percentage is what's going down. So let's say we're putting a 10, 10, 10 down, we're gonna be 100% coverage on that property and a suffractant as well. So here's our two costs per 1,000 square feet, and we'll show you how we get to that. Our overhead comes from this next, or this overhead calculator sheet that we'll go over. So what that is, is basically gonna show you your burden of what it costs to keep the, the lights on every day and what it needs to go into per 1,000 square feet. And you can break that down, whether you wanna do it at a monthly cost, if you wanna do it at a per application cost, if you're five applications, 10 applications, it depends what your business is. And then fuel. Fuel right now, and it, it, it'll show twice. Right now I have it as a um, an automatic build off of which machine I'm using. So this is off of my steel green that I have, 52 with the Kawasaki engine on it. This is basically at current fuel prices what it costs me per 1,000 square feet to go out on that machine. Obviously, I also have a, an XL that uses more. And the Z sprays, they with the Vanguards, they really sip gas compared to the Kawasaki. So And then that, that all can change. Um, so I guess we'll just go into labor burden. Now we'll go into overhead first to get over that. So everyone should have a chart of accounts and whether you're a one man band just starting or if you're six, seven employees deep, mm. you need to prepare for that. So the goal is anyone in their business is really to sell their business. Maybe they're going to pass it on to someone, however, but you want to have some type of value to that company to either hand it off or to sell to a company or to another company, or right now it's hot with private equity firms. So a lot of times you may not have building maintenance because you're working out of your house or you're working out of a shared shop or whatever, but you should be preparing for that as you grow because the hardest thing to ever do is to have your first employee. Um, I think it was Renee, you have one employee, correct? Yeah, he gave a nod. So having that first employee as an owner, you're pro you're the one that loses the most money right away once you have that first employee. It, it's hard. So you want to prepare for all that. And all these numbers are basically fictitious. Um, I've done a bunch of one on one coaching with people and some of these numbers are from some people, some are from others. This isn't all of one, but you know, administrative salaries that could be broken down into your pay. Do you have an office help? Um, is there a a CFO in your company. However, we do have our labor rate that's in there for hourly rate wages, you know, our indirect labor here. So this would be a technician that's out on the turf based on what they're getting paid per hour. And we're going to go over that in our, in this sheet here, which is going to help you to come up with, you know, if you're paying them 2150, here are some of the expected costs you should, you should prepare for and whether or not you have overtime and you use overtime, so you want to make sure you're baked into that, and then unbillable. Some companies you know, target and watch their mileage from job to job. Maybe they're not as root dense as they need to be. So this all can change to get this number in and out, but it works out to basically this guy at 2150, you're really costing your business about 31 bucks an hour to do that. Again, all of this can be played with and we can put things in and just come up with a number. All these two cells here will total up to here what it is per application. And then um, we can divide that out if you want to do it in per 1000 square feet. Do you want to do it in a per month rate? Do you want to, are you an eight month company? Are you a 12 month company? And that all can be amateurized out. But basically here's your expenses rough based off of these numbers of what it costs to run that business right here. Um, and again, this all can be played with, but when it breaks down into per 1,000 square feet, it's $3.95. That's roughly your overhead example of your indirect and um, labor costs for that person to be out on the turf in your business to keep the lights on and be running. This isn't profit yet. We haven't even talked about that. <laughs> so we went through our, our labor. So, you know, 2150. FICA, federal insurance contribution. I mean, these are all the nice things you get to pay into the government. They're so happy you do. 
Um, FUDA, some people have state unemployment tax, some people don't. In Connecticut, they take everything they possibly can and a little bit more. A workman's comp is roughly 1.2% of someone's hourly rate that's going out there. <clears throat> Lawn care is a lower workman's comp, which is nice compared to roofing and trees. So make sure if you do need workman's comp that you have a, a really good insurance company that will stand for you and, and get you into the, the level that you need to be. A lot of companies that are not using power tools such as mowers and all that stuff, a lot of times they'll put you into almost like an office or a sales class to try to keep that number down and work with you if you're doing a lot of insurance business with them. Here's basically just that percentage all added together. It's 17 and a half percent times this number, we're at that 25. And then here, you know, if, if you do zero overtime, then there's zero money involved. If you have, if you're not tracking on billable, that can all go away as well and it just drops it back down so now your labor burden is much less than planning for overtime but again i think just about everyone that has employees out there <laughs> runs into some overtime so you want to just prepare yourself for that this is just my little sheet that i just use for gas when when the price changes let's say it goes up to five bucks a gallon because we're in an amazing place now it's going to cost me this per 1,000 square feet to go out and run my machine and what I did is I basically went to two sports fields over three applications and filled my machine up and then refilled it at the gas station from that one job. So I know my usage between these two are very, very accurate for my machines, my turf height, the loads that I go out on. It's going to vary a little bit, but it's like, you know, roughly work on three to five cents per 1000 square feet is what your gas is costing in your machine. What, what, what would the XL cost you? Would that be uh, like another five cents? Do you know something? <laughs> it, so it's funny you say that because it is a bigger motor, but <laughs> when you base that on the square footage that that machine can cover, yeah, it's not probably much equal. more. Yeah, it's it, probably equal. It's barely, it, it's not enough to move at a full point, which is <laughs> which is really cool. But yeah, I mean, right. That is it, good. Yep. So Kevin, did you say something about how the Z sprays basically sip that gas compared to the um the steel greens the older z sprays did yeah the, like oh, really? the yeah. newer the newer vanguards that have the horizontal motor now with the cooling on the at your shins and all that stuff they're just as hungry but you know my z spray is a 2013 or 14 which is the old 16 and now they're running 18s and and bigger on them yeah they're they're drinking a lot more fuel but my old girl it seems like you could fill it up like every two days it seemed like and the and the kawasaki's they definitely use more fuel but from a 2014 to a 2021, I think it is, um, the advancement of what's on that machine and what you're pushing out is, it's, I'm not saying you're doing more square footage, but you know, now you have more stuff on that machine. You have dual pumps, you have this. So the machine's yeah. working harder because you're putting, you're, you're basically driving a Cadillac now compared mm -hmm. to a Hyundai. That's yeah. how I look at it. Yep. But it's nothing that is going to, break the bank any means. Um, again, yeah. I'm just a planner and a, and a numbers guy. So I just wanted to know what the square footage cost was to run it. it, it, it it's not a big deal. I mean, between these two numbers here, we're talking half a penny per thousand yeah. square foot to do it. it. It really isn't a big deal. Again, this is totally unnecessary. This is just, these, this is a sheet that I use every year when, when Doug was coming up with my product and going through what I was going to go out and what my prices are going to be. And all these numbers tie back into here. Here's our overhead of that 395. Here's the fuel cost. Now, fuel is twice in here. And only reason I say that is because in our indirect and overhead, we have, where the hell is it? There's a fuel line in here. Here it is. You know, this is truck fuel. So the way my fuel is set up is I have equipment fuel and truck fuel for mm -hmm. two reasons. One, I have a really good book creeper that demands it that way, but also in Connecticut, we can put in for a rebate for anything on our equipment fuel. So we're not paying fuel tax on it. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when it is, when gas is four bucks, five bucks a gallon, you know, and you're filling those hogs every day, you can get a credit on the fuel tax, which is important. So that's why it's broken down in my chart of accounts, two mm -hmm. different ways. Product cost is pretty easy. This is just a calculator and this is where Doug does his magic. But you know, the way I have this set up is I can change this price. Let's say it goes up to 175 this year. 
divided by it's 128 ounces in a container so it's one gallon mixed rates there and boom it's going to cost a dollar 37 per 1000 square feet for that product and the same thing with granular it's all there it's whatever your product cost is going to be and and if you know you are going to get 10,000 out of that bag here everything just changes you're going five pounds per thousand for it and now it's going to cost you 240 a bag or i'm sorry a thousand all those tie back into here where here's all your cost where you can go back i can go back in that sheet come up with my square foot price and the over if we look over to the the right side mm. here it is with my total spend with labor and burden everything in there so that's a sum of all these carrying over times five and a half million square feet here's the number for one but we go over to here here's that same thing just product cost in itself so now we can look at it and say, and, and Doug does this with his sheets all the time. Um, I'm basically, my average is $1.50 per 1,000 square feet blended across my rounds. And Doug does this and he has been doing this for his customers. And, and this is, a very, I think, a very, very important because when we go into some of our applications, <laughs> like application two, which jumps up to $36,000, but that's because there's this one doesn't have it, but in mine is when I do my grub application. So, you know, this number for me is more like 60 something thousand dollars. And it just seems like it's an oddity, but when you take them all and average them all across your applications, it comes down to, it's higher than this, but it comes down to an average number that this is what you should be targeting because you're gonna have your ups and downs and money going out, but you're also gonna have your ups and downs and money coming in because grub for me is a one and a half times charge plus a nutrition application. So it's a two and a half time bill every time I go out to that application during two. So I have a windfall of money coming in here and it's just the ebbs and tides of business. But again, this is the target what we're looking for. This is what we want to do and it allows you to play with, geez, do I want to add another type of soil amendment here? Do I want to put something in because you know, 149, a thousand, I really should be probably higher than that if I'm going to be putting out a really good quality product. So it just allows me to kind of gut check myself to what I'm planning on in my budget and also what Doug <coughs> is coming up with, with his prices as well. And for me, for this example, it just comes down, I'm going to spend basically 50 K to get me 183, um, thousand in gross revenue. And then you can play with it from there. You can get into, I do it bring that number over and I put in what's my desired markup that I want or profit. Here's the profit piece. So basically right here with costs and um, labor and burden, I'm at a 26 margin, let's call it 27. But then we start adding in, let's say I want, I want a 40% return. It's gonna bring up, so now I know I need to, to sell for $7.77 a, a square foot. And again, this is just hours of playing back and forth on myself and other people just to Kind of get the gut check. Where are you? You know, as Doug always says, you know, obviously you always want to get the most you can for your services. But if I am at a 40% return on my money and I'm at triple sevens, let's say, and my competitors are at five bucks, well, it's hard sometimes to sell that extra two dollars and 77 cents. <clears throat> maybe I need to either get creative here or maybe. I need to possibly take my expectations down a little bit and, and reduce my margins just so I can get into where I need to be. Because maybe I'm at 749, but I'm like, no, fuck it. I want to be at 10 bucks a foot and I want to make that more because because people are are buying your product. But then competition moves in, you know, and I am I'm personally I am at my threshold of what I can be charging because now everyone's saying that, you know, I, I have prices that are a little bit cheaper than that. These are all new calls. So you know, it just allows you to gut check where you are in the market. And Doug and I went over an example of someone that sent me a proposal that was way low. And um, Doug came up with a number, Matt from Nutmeg State came up with a number, I came up with a number and you know, it, it, I was right in the middle of everyone, which was a good gut check of, it, of how it is. Does anyone, I know I went fast with this and I'm familiar with this. Does anyone have any questions about this or any hypotheticals? <clears throat> I mean, this is something that you've done when you sit down with, with Doug, right? Like, cause Doug, me and you did this back in November. Yep. And it will sat down because yep. we were trying to balance out the pros and cons to go on. Remember from granular to liquid to liquids. Correct. 
So we did it where we ended up changing the program around. I guess similar products, right? Just in a liquid form. Yeah. And we're, we're going to go like, maybe not the exact products that you were doing for you, but we're going to go over that uh, on that calculator that I had for you. We're okay. going to go over that in detail. So, um, so it can kind of make a little bit more sense. So this is a little bit different, but it's kind yeah, of I mean, similar. For me, we, I, I started paying more attention to this for sure. But mm -hmm. then I also do, you know, bag count sheets, ounce count mm -hmm. sheets every single day for every single truck and then you compare it yep you, know, you have to yeah is someone able to send this, to this spreadsheet to me once once Wait. things are are cleaned up on this um yeah we can make this available on a limited basis uh, the, the next thing i'm going to do is i'm actually going to take this kevin's spreadsheet and put it into my spreadsheet so when you're doing something like your product on application one will come over here automatically when you do it on my calculator. And then um, your cost per thousand will show up automatically. So this page, you won't have to do anything except changing your margins. Which is down here. It's right just, I, just, I, just, I haven't been, I just haven't had time to do it. Yeah, it there, there's all, just, there's not, a lot not, to it. <laughs> I'm not great to, with Excel or equations yet. So <laughs> Something that would calculate my my cost per thousand would be lovely. Oh yeah. And who who is this we're speaking with? Uh, this is Dan. Well, I'm I'm with uh, Lawn Away by Tarzan out of Westchester, Pennsylvania. Awesome. So, Dan, anytime, reach out. I mean, I I have all winter. I'm I'm just saying, and and Doug has some time too, and we can walk and help you build this on a on a private part so that it's just your personal stuff and help you to understand. That's all we want to do. We're, I'm not saying we're right, we're wrong. I built this before I met Doug and Doug is mm -hmm. going to show you he has something very similar. So if two people kind of have the same idea, it should be halfway okay. And everything can be tweaked to whatever needs to be customized individually. And once you learn how to change some of the formulas and play with it, it yeah, you can screw it up. But this wonderful little back arrow here does wonders. Just it'll get you out of any predicament you're in um but yeah I'd be more than happy to to do another zoom call with you and just go through this so you understand it better and we can actually start playing with your numbers so it makes some sense to you absolutely it's not i have a ballpark currently but it's nice to know exactly kind of like dead square where you're at you know 100 so percent. yeah it, it you know there's it, it works well you hear people say that i normally take my product cost and triple it and that you know, where I learned that was to not use that was a prior company, Russo Lawn and Landscape. And we were a $6 million company, 85 guys during the summertime, 300 during the wintertime. And I come in all hot and cocky that I'm going to come in and run the world with them. And I'm like, ah, oh, two times plant and two and a half times for a tree install. And he goes, well, what's that going to do? <laughs> goes, are you making money? I'm like, well, yeah, we're getting two and a half times the tree. He goes, so how long does it take you to go in there? So he's the one that really taught me that there's the gut check and then there's the real numbers to know if you are making money and, and what is left over. And maybe you need to charge a little more. Maybe you're on the higher end and you can afford to stay where you are and be competitive in your market. And it's just nice to be able to double and triple check that so you can see all that. So, so I work for a gentleman right now that uh, part-time that, that didn't believe in budgets until about three years ago and he runs a multi-million dollar business. So uh wow. Yeah. Is that who I think is that who I think it is, Dan? Uh yeah, I believe yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. Wow. Is he, sell is he selling marijuana? Because <laughs> uh, not no, a win, but wow. <laughs> um, uh, it was uh kind of figure out or it was kind of just do it until we figure it out kind of thing. And uh wow. yeah. So I had a call yes. Yeah, yesterday it ended up being like two hours long, which was which was awesome. It, the time flew by, but you know, I know he's listening, and I and I won't mention his name, but he he knows who he is, and he said he was having winter boredom and depression. And I said, listen, you need to change your mindset for the winter time and get into these numbers because planning is the profit side. Yep. We all can go out on the turf. We can all manage people. That's easy this is the stuff the pennies is what makes you the money it really really does and planning properly off of a good budget especially with what doug shows us next 
being able to source, negotiate, buying power, early order, knowing exactly where you are, that's when the returns are going to happen at, at, in your business. And this, I told them, change the mindset. This is, this is the profit time. Take this as a challenge to really learn the numbers and enjoy them. There's a ton of things out on YouTube. There's, there's so many opportunities out there of finding things to, doesn't even have to be in our business, but profit and loss statements, chart of accounts, all those things that really, I enjoy the winter time. Yes, I'm not beating my body as much, but I love the numbers and I get wrapped into this and running different scenarios. The cool thing about this is, should I, I can have five different copies of this and change different chemicals to where I'm going to be. And we all know what happened this year. If you're in this East Coast belt area of all the water, you had to make changes, you know, and mm -hmm. all I really needed to do is make sure that the cost of this one to the one I was moving to was going to be somewhat equal. It was, it cost me a little bit more because of the weather and that's what's going to happen. But I knew exactly how much it was going to cost me to give the, co the customers what they deserve based on the weather. You know, that's, that's the business we're in. It's, it's I funny. I, I saw him today at uh, the DTL so soil wellness conference uh, in downtown mm -hmm. and uh, we were, we were going over some stuff, but um, yeah, this is the, this is the time of year to like kind of, Cause you know, during the season, it's kind of like, I'm a fireman. I'm putting out fires. I'm, I'm kind of just making it go because we have so much work and I kind of just figuring out as we go, um, that like honing in right now and pre-planning is, is, is more important than some folks think, you know, from my personal Absolutely. experience. Absolutely. If I could actually say one thing to, so, sorry to chime in. So I'm no, actually, please do. I'm actually a business finance guy and this is a side hustle. And, um, I will say <laughs> to you guys, <laughs> Um, I'm on the other side of the things. I'm still learning the FERT and uh, we control side, but this is my game. This is numbers. I know it all. So I would encourage you guys that are out there um, in the off season, go to the local college university and take an Excel basics class. Yep. And oh, yes. You take that and I will tell you, you, so I P and L I did my P and L my first year cause I couldn't afford the accountant cause I didn't have enough money to pay for the account to do the work. So I did all of my books for the year. And when you start to see your numbers, you're like, they're, they're, you shouldn't be paying somebody else to know your numbers. Like you should know your own numbers first. Cause when you know your numbers, you rule the game. So yep. Like uh, Kevin said. So I would suggest to all you guys, like, you know, it, it's, of course, educating yourself on this is always great. Even being in the seminar is great for you guys. But take an Excel class at a local college or university, just one class, and you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, I could do. And once you get in those numbers, you're going to start tinkering and playing. And that tells you everything. So I just want to kind of just throw that out there. No, Thank that, you. you're, you're absolutely right. Thank you. you know, Doug is really, really, really good at building Excel and, and tying together. And I'm, I'm still wet behind the ears with it. Um, and I've done most of mine off of YouTube, but I've, I had some basic uh, knowledge of it, Renee, and, and I, I agree a thousand percent because like you said, once you get some of the basic formulas down and how these sheets work, like I said, you, you find the, the pennies, you find the nickels and it's, it's really, it can change the business very, very quickly. Yeah. And once you integrate, I mean, I'm going to go a little further here. Oh, once please you do. throw in pivot charts and graphs, when you start seeing colors, you're like, whoa. That's where you start to really, and you already have the data there. It's already there. So once the data is there and lives somewhere, all you got to just know is how to put it into like a graph. And it's like, once you start seeing these things, like visually, you'll see, oh my gosh, why am I doing this? Like I've been doing this for years and you'll start changing your actions immediately. And Absolutely. Then, and Christian, you know, you, you have staff and, and this is something that we did all the time is we would post certain charts on in the employee room or where, wherever it's going to be so that they can see where they are and you can set goals and you can, you could do your inventory to say, Hey guys, you're freaking 12% over and over inventory. Where's the product going? Is it on the sales side? Is the measuring off is a calibration on the machines off or guys, uh, you're doing your mom's house. You know, it, it just, yeah. all that information yeah, yeah, is so important. Where, that's what those bad count sheets at the end of the day. I mean, I talk to the guys and you know, they'll fill it out. You know, because if we're putting down a certain amount, we need to put down X amount per thousand. So four pounds per thousand square feet, right? Is our target rate, let's say, for the product. We start using more product. That's my way of catching it before it gets out of hand. Yep. I mean, I look at it every day. Oh, and yeah, I, and I know me, you. 
it's it's every day you mm-hmm. start looking at stuff and it sounds like it's all right it's another tedious thing to do at the end of the day it's really not i've gotten to the point where you know we'll get five guys that go out and spray and then the three guys that go out and do all the fertilizer so there's eight sheets of paper that i just glance at every day quick math less than 10 minutes i'm done and if something sends up a red flag you know i'm able to to jump on it right away before it gets out of hand if i mm-hmm. would have known this stuff you know 10 12 years ago when i really got into it i'd be so much further ahead than what i am i just it it's and doug you've helped me out a great deal with knowing this stuff you know appreciate um, that and you've helped me out so much with with figuring out the stuff exactly what's on this spreadsheet um and it's put a lot of things in perspective because you know it's everybody goes by you always say it all the time the cost per bag oh how much do you pay per bag well I'm so not into that anymore. You know what I mean? I'm definitely cost per thousand, which you kill me sometimes because you always per acre. (laughs) Sorry, man. I'm an old golf guy. What do you want me to tell you? I'm like, Doug, you're killing me here. We got to divide it by 43,560. Come on. But, uh, you know how many times I get my balls broken about that? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, a hundred percent, man. It's changed. It's changed, uh, my outlook on a lot of things. It's, it's, you know, it's just so important to know your numbers. And, you know, I think every, a lot of people think that they do, and this is no disrespect to anybody at all, because, you know, when I was young, you know, I thought I did too. But then when I really started diving into stuff, I was like, wow, I am really not where I need to be. And yeah. uh, you, you, you just, those little things that you're not picking up on as cost, just like Kevin was talking about, you know, that time they leave in the morning, they go to Wawa in our area. They go to yeah. Wawa. That's downtime. That's unbillable time. And to me, yeah, that should be tracked because, you know, you got eight crews going out or however many crews you got going out every day, you know, and it's, you know, that's just called an hour of unbillable time every day. It could be probably more like an hour and a half. It's two yeah. hours. Yeah. I'd say two hours. It's 15 <laughs> minutes per crew. You know, <laughs> yeah. We ran into this all the time. Who's paying for it? You know, the customer has to pay for it. Yeah. It can't be taken out of your profitability. I mean, it just can't. Yeah. Yeah. And and those are those are are really good growing pains to have. And mm-hmm. and I have a ton of information on that just from past companies. I'm I'm a owner operator. So again, I keep my fuel on site at my own place right now because I don't want to stop at a gas station. Yeah. I, first place to get in an accident is a gas station. It always happens. And it just, it's 15 minutes out of your life that I just don't want to stop at. So I don't, I don't, I keep everything on, on site, which is good. Um, and it's something that people should, should think more of, especially at the cost of fuel and the way it is now, but that's a whole different story. So, you know, when you said Doug, that numbers and, you know, you thought you knew yourself really well, or, or here we are on, on line with Renee, who's a finance guy, which is really cool because yeah. I'm, I'm guaranteeing Renee can teach us something because oh, 100%. I'm, I'm sure this looks okay, but he's probably got this thing pulled apart in his head already. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> which, which, uh, you've, got, you, you've got a good basic game here. Which, which I, no, I'm, I'm all up for criticism. This is just pulled out of my ass one year, just oh. on board, board winter, but you know, your input's going to be, I think, invaluable being on the finance game. That, that's, I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, um, I've taken it, uh, some of the spreadsheets that I've I've created are have, uh, for example, where your application one says 10, 10, 10. Uh, I take it a step further where you could even do a drop down that shows all the different kinds of applications that I can do <laughs> and what are those current costs are. So it's almost like a book. Yeah. So like, okay. Because you're not always using the same kind of product in application one every year. Okay. So like, you know, you may shop around different things and those four different kinds of options for application one, you just do a drop down to which one you want and that, when you choose it, it just auto populates everything else. So it's like, but again, That's this way is, over my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but my like, skill, not over my head, over my skill level. And, and Doug has those, which are cool, which we're going to get to in a second where he has some drop down of all the products when he built my my season this year, which was really neat. Yeah, and, and then and then it even further breaks it down where you say product, it's gonna actually tell me a column for nitrogen, like give me the MPK for each one. <laughs> so then if I'm aiming for MPK of whatever at the end of the year, uh, I could build it as I go. So every time, so for example, if you've got like you want if, if the goal is four pounds of N 
for, for the season, then I could start doing application to one. I could change it to, to 20 and then application to 30. And then at the end, all the way at the end, it'll tell me what the thousand square feet amount of nitrogen I'll be throwing down throughout all my applications. You ready, Doug? Because I know, I know you're drooling over there. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> This is this is his sweet spot, which is cool. And it, and again, no, no, but hey, this is this is huge for somebody who's not even running Excel or numbers. Yeah, oh. there we go. I was gonna oh, say Doug's yeah. chart's gonna play well with that other one. Is that Doug yeah, right there? And and I'm gonna eventually get this all intertwined. It just takes time, unfortunately. It's uh, you know, it's Doug, it's what is it is. You? So, yeah, this is me. Oh man, you stole my you you stole my work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I knew. I knew exactly what chart to think of when you were talking about the MPK and all that. I was like, well, it only sure took 35 years to get there, huh, Doug? <laughs> no, I actually, you know, look, I, I did. I taught myself Excel uh, back when I first got into sales uh, back in 2006. Um, I didn't want to be like everybody else and just hand a, a pray sheet out. I just, it wasn't my thing. I just didn't want to be that way. So I taught myself how to do all this. And even over time, you start learning different formulas. You start learning how to do V lookup and all this stuff. And it's awesome. When you start learning how to do Excel, it, it's really cool. Um, I, I don't know how any other way to say it. And somebody asked me to build them a spreadsheet of something like this. I have it already. And I can literally do, do these things in literally like 20 minutes with a customer. So um, it's just something I'm good at and something I've taught myself. And, uh, but I still learn something new every year, it seems to putting something else in here. So um, it's fun. I love it. So um, can everybody hear me? Yep. Okay. Just want to make sure. So, you know, one of the big things you'll always hear me talk about is, you know, what's in the bag, right? So there's, there's a lot of fertilizers out there, you know, they're not all created equal. Some look cheap, um, you know, because obviously because of cost, you know, but then you have a bag that might cost more money, but it's all product in the bag. And, you know, you know, the popular two numbers this year or the last few years since COVID, um, with the price spikes and prices that have come down recently, but you know, is the 10 zero zeros and the 12 zero zeros. And it's a very popular number in the industry. Um, I try to avoid it, um, because I just don't think you're going to be happy with the application. Um, there's just not enough material in that bag and I'll, and I'll kind of go through this real fast on these. So obviously um, I'm not here to promote anybody's product. I'm just here because this is on this calculator. I've changed a lot of names on this thing. So I just kind of want to run through this. Um, so if you, you know, 16, two, three, I got to figure out how to change this, but I will eventually um, you just put one app there on round one. If you want to do a four pound spread rate. There's something in the background, Kevin. I don't hear anything in the background. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's my microphone. So we're going to go with a four pound spread rate on this on this product. And as you can see, it'll cost you two dollars. Now these are all fictitious prices too. Now, they may be something that you have already. I'm just not. They may be the same price, higher price, lower price. Don't look at all that stuff right now. Um, but you know, this is based off a 50 acre company, um, which they do 50 acres around. So if you go at a four pound spread rate on the 1623, you'll see here you get 0.64 pounds of N per thousand square foot. Okay. You get 0 0.08 pounds of phosphorus, K, your calcium, your magnesium, manganese, and your iron. So all your main nutrients will be uh, put onto this spreadsheet. Um, your cost per acre, as everyone knows I like, is $88.86. Cost per thousand, two dollars and two cents. Now, here's something that you always hear me talk about is filler. So as you can see, there is no filler in this bag. And so everything in this bag, the entire 50 pounds of product is product. It is either nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, iron, uh, calcium, uh, whatever it might be in that bag. So biosolids, chicken poultry, all that. So Everything is a nutrient or going to have some agronomic value for you. And uh, to me, I believe that's what we should be looking for in fertile, in granular fertilizers. But what did I just do? Never mind. All right. So <laughs> here, you know, I did my app. So you, I did one app so far. 
Okay, so there's a two, where your two dollars and two cents shows up. Now I'm gonna I'm just gonna show this comparison real quick. So I'm gonna delete that real quick, real quick. And then I'm gonna go to your twelve zero zero. Okay, let's just say we're gonna go at the same four pound <laughs> spread rate. Yep, it's a lot less per thousand. Okay, but you're only gonna get 0. 0.48 pounds of N per thousand square foot. Now. This does have some biosolids in it, but it's not total or it would not spread right. So you have 20 pounds of filler in each bag. That cost of filler for that bag is $5.50. That gives you no agronomic value whatsoever. So essentially, you know, you need to add something to that bag to help you out, so to say. Um why put something in there that's not going to give you any agronomic value, right? So now you want to get the same nitrogen load. Now you're at five pounds. You're still not at the exact number, but you're pretty close. Um, this gives you five pound spread, dollar eighty eight per thousand. Um, so over on this quote sheet. So let me go go back here for a second because I'm going to do this. Put the same thing here. I just want to show this example. So on this quote sheet. So you'll see on the 1623, you need 174 bags. On the 1200, you need 218 bags. You're talking about a $300 price difference. That's all we're talking about, but you're using less bags. So that will improve your labor cost. Um, so you won't be putting as many bags down. You know, it's about 26, uh, let's say a pallet less in bags. Um, yeah, it's going to cost you a little bit more, but... You're going to use less bags, so your labor costs will improve. But you're also getting a product that you know is going to do much better for you agronomically. So, um, you know, with that being said, we'll go to an even different product to compare. So, if you're looking at like an eight, you want some higher nitrogen, 1804. So, if you're doing that, four pound spread again, same thing, no really difference. You know, you're going to save a few cents per bag. But on that 1804, you got 28 pounds of filler in a bag. That filler costs you $7.70. To me, I mean, that's, again, this is just me, my opinion. Um, I think that's a total waste of money putting filler in a bag. Um, there's a lot of things you can put in there, whether it's all biosolids. You can put some chicken poultry in there. You can put some humic acids. Um, you know, oh God, calcium, you know a lime-based product, something like that, to, you can double up on an application. So you're improving your labor. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do with your fertilizers. Yes, you have. there are criterias for certain things you have to meet, uh, but sometimes there are stock products that can help you out on this as well. Um, but anybody have any questions? Damn, no no questions. Um <laughs> So I was talking about the the ten zero zero. So if you're going to this at a five pound spread, there's thirty eight pounds of filler in that bag. Ten dollars and forty five cents of that bag is filler. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I just uh, this is one of those things that you know Kevin talks a lot about. People buy what's on the shelf. And because that's the only thing that people have in stock. And uh, when you go into a store and, you know, planning is key. You know, if you plan early enough, you'll get what you want and you'll, you know, you'll have a, a better uh, understanding of what your numbers are going to be and what things cost. So, um, you know, we were talking about double apping. So, you know, this is a product that has a calcium based product in that you could use as your Lyme application. Um, a few of you I know do it already. Um, so, you know, if you want to do something like that, right? So it's a four pound spread. It'll give you some calcium. It'll give you some iron, um, a nice balanced fertilizer. Um, cost you a buck 90. Again, these numbers are fictitious. There's no filler in the bag. So let's just call this two applications. So instead of one application we're going to call it two applications because it's you're going to double bill here um now your cost per thousand is 95 cents 
you're still going to get your 0.64 pounds of N, all your uh, phosphorus and potassium, and all that stuff. Going back to filler, just so you know, these these numbers will vary a little bit because it depends on the type of phosphorus you're using, the type of uh, potassium you're using, and all and other ingredients because of either bulk density or the nutrient count in each one of those products. So you may have a six uh, twelve zero zero that might be twenty four bags, uh, twenty four pounds of filler in a bag because it's a different phosphorus source or potassium source. Just an FYI. Um, you know, chemical wise, you know, if you're looking at, let's just say a chitosan type product, you know, you know, again, one app, half ounce per thousand, 27 cents per thousand square foot, you know, it's going to, this, this is going to show you all your numbers, right? 1191 an acre. And if you would like, I can write a whole entire program for you. Um, just as an example, give me a couple seconds to do it. But before I do that, I just want to go over like grub control because uh, uh, where is my grub? Is it uh, it's in this one? So if you are, I know there's a lot of talk about grub controls this year. You know, there's, you know, in New Jersey, we can't use the middle corporate anymore. So um, there is a new one out here called Durentis, which is right here. I don't know the exact cost yet because they haven't released it, but I just, I'm going to speculate. Um where is my acceleprin? It's the most expensive one on there. Just look for that. Yeah, I know, but it's, uh, <laughs> I forget where I put it. So you got a acceleprin, and I don't even know if this number is correct anymore. So as you can see, Dorentis is going to be more expensive. Okay. Plain and simple. So um, hold on one second. I can't remember. I think I got to change the rate. 0.2 2, or... 0.27 ounces divided by 44. It's 0.06, 0.06, 0.06 ounces per thousand square foot. So if this is the price, which I'm speculating for what I'm hearing, it's going to be between that 70 and $90 an acre range. I, I don't quote me on that, but that's what I've been hearing. So if you're looking at a celeprint, both good products, right? This one is eight ounces to the acre. Point five so you're, so you're oh, going to yeah. wait one yep. eight. Yep. And that costs you three dollars and twenty seven cents per thousand square foot. So, to rent this is going to be more expensive per unit, but a celeprin is going to be more expensive per thousand because of the use rate. Now, I know there's a new. I think there's a it was a celeprin extra or what out whatever that's out there. Um, I think they might have even come up with a double two double E label on a celebrant now that can shows that you can use a lower use rate. You know, I don't know how that's possible all of a sudden, but um the acelaprin extra cannot be used in New Jersey because it's a neonicotoid in there, but I know in other areas it can. I don't have this on here because so I because I you know most of my sales are in New Jersey. Um so I just wanted to show that to kind of give you an idea of a product that's going to be more expensive per unit, but it's going to be less expensive for you overall because of the cost per thousand. So, um, so let's just, just like do a program real quick. Um, anybody got any questions? Damn. Okay. I just want to, I, I want to say that's probably the, probably the most important feature of the whole night is really knowing exactly what, each unit is going to give you for coverage and the cost of it compared to just so many people just walk into the store and they see like wise products, but they see one cheaper and they just grab that one thinking that it's a deal. And it, it's a loss leader item. It, it's done on purpose. It's how they make their money, it, knowing your numbers. And I, Renee will go over it as a finance guy. Every decision he makes is off of numbers mm -hmm. and it has to be. We're, we're businessmen. If, <laughs> the more you can retain, the more that's going to be in your pocket, and the more that the government can tax from you. Absolutely. hundred percent. That, um, that filler, that cost per filler is insane. Yep. Oh, it's, it's outrageous. People don't realize that. And, no. you know, I know Doug talks about it all the time in, in per ton, but when you look at it, you know, remember your 10, 10, 10 is just a percentage of active ingredient in a bag, a percentage right. mm -hmm. of that 50 pounds. 
You got 15 pounds of active ingredient in a 50 pound bag. It's friggin' disgusting. I mean, we were trying to, um, one of the guys that I was, I, I kind of network with a little bit was looking for a new vendor. Told him about Doug. I told him to say, listen, and, and Doug, I think you've told him this too. Do the bag test, right? Yep. Take, take the bag out, you know, filter it, run a hose over it, see what's left. You get little bits of, you know, stone and all kinds of other fillers that never go away. Yep. They just sit there. And they're yep. completely useless. Un- yeah, useless. You're not using it. You're not doing anything. But you're still paying for it. Yep. It's it's basically spread and grab. That has a 50 pound bag with 50 pounds worth of product. It's crazy how much filler costs. Um, it used to be, they used to use a lot of, cl- uh, um, lime fillers, um, back in the day. And, but it just tears up the, uh, when I say lime, it's more like a pulverized lime and it yeah. just tears up the, uh, the, the actual blenders that sell so bad that they stopped using it. Most, most of them stopped using it. Now it's stone filler. That's a little bit easier, but if you talk to any fertilizer manufacturer, they will, they love when people make products with no filler in it, stone filler in it, because it tears up their blenders. And, uh, when, when a fertilizer plant goes down, chances are they've been running fertilizers with filler in it. It's crazy. And, uh, you don't think about it, but it's just one of those things that, you know, one of my biggest fertilizer suppliers, Nutrite. They're just like, dude, we love making your stuff because there's never any filler in your bags. Yeah. You know, and uh, then, you know, you have other blenders that you just, they don't have anything to put in it. You know, it's just the way it is. And, uh, you know, look, a pound of ends, a pound of N, I get it. But, you know, there's a lot of other things you can put in a bag to make things better. So um, any, any others? All right, I'm going to just go through a program like, you know, real quick and uh, see what we can come up with here to kind of show you. uh, So round one, I think a lot of people mostly in this area do granular. Not everybody. I know a couple on here don't do uh, uh, granular at all. Um, So, you know, we'll go for round one, prodiamine, 0.37. Again, everything will total up here. I'll do the apps at the end for a reason. Um, So round two. I think a lot of people still continue on that path with a granular app. Um, they just, uh, you know, we're just going to go that way on this one, just kind of show you uh, uh, everything. So there's your, there's that again, four pound spread. You can see your nitrogen, your potassium and phosphorus, everything ca- recalculates to where it needs to be. So we're already at point, 1.28 pounds of N per thousand square foot. So um, now we have, you got to put it broadleaf weed control. What's everybody's broadleaf uh, control of choice? Is it uh, triad? Is it triclopyr, T zone? I don't think Escalate. I ha- escalate and cool power are kind of the same price. So I think they're right around the same rate, too. So, um, <laughs> so you can see that kind of calculates everything um, 89 cents per thousand square foot. Um, gives you all your math. So, you know, I recommend surfactants in here. Um, I've been, become a huge advocate of Kytosan. Um, not everybody has to use it, but just me, um, you know, that gives you, it does, has a lot more value, uh, than just, uh, being a surfactant, um, half ounce rate per thousand squ- square foot, 27 cents per thousand. Probably that thing, you can get away with that on your second round, $3 and 18 cents per thousand square foot on that second round. Okay. Now. Probably a good idea to do, where's it at? Durentis. And we're just going to use Durentis for this, okay? So good idea to do Durentis on that app, you know, to get that out of the way. So now you're double billing on that app as well. So right now we're at three apps, let's say. Not too bad, $2.27 per thousand square foot when you average everything out. Okay? So... Round three, I'm going to say we're going to do liquid applications on round three. A new popular product out here in today's world. I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, a total, ma- a, how do I say this, distributor of this product, but um, it's been out here and people are loving it. And I've seen a lot of good things with it. If I could find it, I'd be dangerous. Um, 
I know it's in here somewhere. And I don't know why I can't find it. This is the only downside of a Dropbox. Um, Must be sold out. Oh, uh, maybe it's <laughs> not in this one. I know it is. Oh, I know it is. Hold on. There it is. I'm just going to copy and paste, <laughs> make it easy on myself. All right. So let's just copy and paste here. It's a Metis 40 Um, Good product. You know, one app. Let's, let's go with 0.7 ounces per thousand square foot. You'll see it's going to cost you 35 cents per thousand square foot. If you go up, now you're at $1.56 uh, pounds of N. We're on our fourth app already. Uh, let's throw some biostimulants in there. You know, one app at 0 0.03 ounces, you know, cost you another 14 cents. Let's throw some uh, beneficial bacteria in there. One at one ounce per thousand, another 35 cents. Throw some more chitis in, in there. Really bang up the, uh, bang up your turf. If that's where you want to stop, you're at a buck 10 per thousand square foot. Not too shabby. So now you go back up here on four apps. You're at $1.98 per thousand square foot, averaging everything out, including grub control. Okay. We're going to do that. Let's just say we're going to do that same thing on round four, just to make it simple. Okay. Same thing. You're at a buck 10. Round five, coming out of, you know, summer, you know, into that late August, into, September into September 2204, 50% ammonium sulfate coated, some slow release, 20%, humic acid, bios, biostimulants, and some calcium. Okay. One app, 3.25 pounds of N or a product, I'm sorry, cost you a buck 58. Now you're at 2.57 pounds of N. We're going to do that same app. On round six. Okay. One. Oops. Okay. Now we're going to double bill for lime with that application with the amount of calcium that we have in it. So we're at six steps, but we're really at eight steps because of the grub and lime. You're a $1.52 per thousand square foot on the average for the year. $3.28 per thousand square foot. Or I'm sorry, for nitrogen for the year. 0.16 pounds of phosphorus, 0.51 pounds of K, almost a, a pound of calcium, no mag, no, no manganese. We could always throw a micronutrient package in there somewhere. And then 0.31 pounds of N. Let's just say you wanted to throw some micronutrients in there, you know, you could always throw it in there very inexpensively. You know, throw some miners in there. Where the hell did it just go? Let's just say one ounce. You know, cost you another 16 cents per thousand square foot. You know, something like that. So as you can see, you know, just showing cost of a product or a cost of a bag isn't going to tell you your true numbers. So if you can like do all this and put things together or have a salesman that can do this for you and put it together for you, he will be a great uh, asset to you to show you your true numbers. But so after that's all said and done, we can come right over here to the quote sheet. This spells it all out. Okay. Everything transfers over to this. And, uh, you know, you can see all the numbers here are going to add, be the same that's over here. So everything's going to calculate for you. Um, it's, you know, if you learn how to do Excel, you can do this all on your own. But at the end of the day, it can really uh, help you uh, grow your business to make you more profitable. Any questions? That's pretty good, Doug. Anyone, does anyone know their average, and you don't have to say it, but are you comfortable knowing your average cost per thousand square foot for the season? No, no one's dug that deep in to really know. We figured it out, Doug, I forget. <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right around there, Christian. Um, <laughs> yeah. We, we just didn't put the Dorentis or a Celeprint in there yet because yeah. we, we truly don't know 
if Dorentis is going to be registered in time. That's the problem. I believe. Well, I, I read. I listened to the podcast. It just got yeah, the federal probably, approval, right? Yeah. yeah. So now so, it's just going to take some time to make it to the state, right? Correct. So Delaware will probably be the first state. It always is. I don't know yeah. why, but it always is for every registration uh, process for the states. Um, you know, unfortunately, like New Jersey is not going to be probably in the top twenty. Um, but. At least we're not New York. Um, <laughs> Glenn, you're you're five years from now. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's if I'm lucky. Don't laugh, yeah. Kevin. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I'm not far behind you. <laughs> well, at least it's not California. That'll never get registered. Um, so, you know, hopefully it is. But this way you can at least see, you know, like, let's just change that real quick just to kind of give you that difference um, of what it would be. Because... It, it, it's it's a huge number, right? Yeah. And yeah. So That's now you're at, you're at three dollars and twenty seven cents. Yeah. Now you're at a buck seventy five. You're twenty cents per thousand square foot more average for the year. You know, twenty cents doing you know twelve million square feet. <laughs> That's yeah. a lot of money. So you know it's yeah, these things are. Ah, yeah, you are. What's what? What came down the bit off What the heck was that? <laughs> <Not> sure. <laughs> so it's in my in my opinion, it is good to know your numbers. This okay. way, you can properly budget. Right. You're going to charge for your customers. Okay. Any questions? No work phone. No nothing. Tell you, so sorry, going off. Somebody's hey, hey Derek, could you could you mute your phone? Thank you. So that's all I got. Hey, Doug, Kevin, can you hear me? Yeah, we sure can. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Jason with Spears Landscape. Yo, what's up, man? Hey, what's up? I've just been listening along here. Uh, yeah, I'd say the biggest takeaway from this is last year um, I used a lot of granular fertilizers that contained a lot of filler and I'm wanting to get away from that this year and uh, really up the game on my lawn. So that's been the biggest eye-opening thing. Um, as I've, you know, over last season and, and especially tonight, I think that's just a, a really big thing that would be a game changer among competitors in our areas because, you know, a lot of the big box or not big box, but the, the, the larger companies that, you know, have dozens of texts that go out, you know, that can be the biggest difference, you know, for our smaller operations. And I, I just think there's a lot of value to that. And I've really enjoyed uh, learning about that <coughs> over the last several months, but it's starting to make sense. Um, you know, breaking down and, and learning a bag of fertilizer uh, isn't something that comes naturally to a lot of us, you know, but the more you look at it, you, it starts to catch and you start to understand it, you know, Absolutely. Look, you know, when I first got into this business, I mean, you know, I I didn't know shit, you know, it was just learning, you know, and reading labels and understanding what's in a product, knowing the active ingredients, um, you know, <laughs> knowing what's in that bag. And, you know, I'm not, it didn't happen overnight. I mean, 35 years experience in this industry, even, you know, but I'm still learning every day. That's the beauty of it all. You know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, there's always going to be a new product that comes to play and you got to learn, it, you know, you may not even use it this year, but go and learn the product, learn the active ingredient, you know, um, learn, you know, the percentage of active ingredient that's in it because it makes a difference. Um, that's the difference between Dorentis and a Celeprin. It's four times the active ingredient load in Dorentis than it is to Celeprin or three times. I'm sorry. Um, and that's why it's going to cost more money, but the use rates are going to be much, much lower. So if you've never used either one of those products or that type product, you know, that first year, probably, I will tell you, you might get a few lawns that you might have some breakthrough on. But that second year, I think, Kevin, you can attest to this. Um, I think once you get through that first year of using one of these two products, it's like bulletproof. Yep. 100%. So I've got another question about a Celeprin. Sure. 
So let's say you do try to use that your first year and you mm -hmm. want to convert some customers to using that. And from what I gather, it would be best to put that down early, yep. um, you know, before June. Yes. You know, preferably May would probably be ideal. April, May. Uh, let's say it's your first season doing that and there could be some breakthrough. Would you try to switch to something like to Trino later yeah. in the season if you had breakthrough for that first year? Yeah. Um, okay. Tetrino is a great contact. It's going to be much less expensive than, um, Dilox. Mm -hmm. I mean, like big time Dilox is a great product, right? But you know, a jug of Tetrino at 0. 0.5, I think it's what 0. 0.55 0. ounces, 5, Kevin, 5. Yep, um, you know, is going to be much, much less expensive than, um, using Dilox, I can actually. <coughs> I think I have. Uh, I ask you, how much? How much was uh, Tetrino? Well, four hundred ninety-five dollars a jug on early right. order. Is that a gallon? Um, yes. So, hold on. I know I have it in here. I just don't know where I have it. Um, I can kind of show you the math. Oh, there, there it is. I just went past it. So. Detrino wise, you know, you can, you can use Detrino as your grub control. Okay. But as you can see, it's about $2 and 11 cents per thousand at that 0.55 rate. You mm -hmm. can use that um, as your grub control, but it's only an eight to 10 week product. So that would be more of like a July, August product. Um, no later than probably mid July. Um, so it, you kind of have to weigh it out, you know, and your, I, your timing has to be impeccable. Perfect. It perfect. really does. Mm -hmm. You know, where a Celeprin, you have a bigger, a Celeprin or Dorentis, you have a bigger window. Right. Um, But I would encourage, I don't know, I, I've heard grumblings that they're going to come out with a smaller package of uh, Detrino for lawn care. Um, So if they do, I would encourage to have a gallon or a smaller unit laying around just for those particular circumstances. You may never have a grub problem. I don't know. How far along does the Trino work? You know, you know, I mean, at a certain point, everything becomes ineffective, I guess, when the size, what end star. I know Matt from Nutmeg State, he freaking had, he had a non-customer that reached out to him. He went there and they were, I mean, he <laughs> could have gone, he could have gone fishing with them and he laid it out. And he went back just for a second app just to make sure about four weeks later. And he said it was amazing. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. I yeah, mean, I, I know, I know Dilox at a certain point is, is useless. But... Oh yeah, definitely. I don't think Detrino has that issue. I don't know that for a hundred percent, but I, I don't think it does, but Dilox definitely does. No question. Yeah. I think if they came out with a smaller packaging, you could, you could afford to have it on the, yeah. on, the on the truck. Yeah. Well, keep in mind, most of these products that are always built, you know, it's, they're built for golf. You know, yeah. they're not really built for the lawn care market. Um, I, I shouldn't say it like that. They are built for lawn care, but they're really built for the bigger lawn care companies or the golf courses. So they're not, they're not packaged for the right, smaller guys. Right. So they, if these companies like, I don't know how to say this, like if they, if they had a little bit of a, like an idea about how big the lawn care market really is and what it's changing to, their right. focus would shift. Right. You know, and they would start realizing that, you know, not everybody's a 500 acre, you know, company. You know, there's a lot of good 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 acre companies out here, 100 acre companies that do a great job, but they just don't want to go out and spend, you know. Well, sure. The first time I was yeah. in golf and I bought the first mini bulk drum of Merit and it was 2,500 <laughs> bucks. And and I was like, you got to be kidding me. I'm like, hey, yeah. you know, I when the thing got delivered and I looked at it, it was smaller than a five gallon pail. And I was like, that's 2,500 <laughs> bucks. Yep. But that was back in what, 96, 95? That was 94 was the first, 95 was the first year Merit came out. Yeah. Okay. So. And then when the generic came out in <clears> 2000. <throat> and four i think it was yeah, five was somewhere yeah that was it was yeah you couldn't afford not to do it at that yeah, point it was Especially in golf it went from 25 actually it went up to like 2800 dollars a drum by that time and it went down to like 450 dollars a drum overnight yep yep it was crazy I, but, i'm hoping that's what happens with a solar panel that comes off patent comes off next year so 
Well, I will tell you, there's two companies that are that I know of that will have it. Um, when 24 it or 25, it comes off. It'll well, it'll be late. It'll be too late in 24. Okay. Um, it, so. My guess is that it'll be on early order for 25. Yeah. Um, what the what the price is going to be? I don't know. Nobody's really obviously talking about that. Even even Durantis, that's pure speculation that I'm telling you right now. Yeah, we'll I see. mean, they might throw a curveball out there and just totally squash everybody. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? So, right. Well, it all depends on how many how how hard they have fighting getting it labeled in. If it's only labeled in four or five states, then yep. you know they're going to get all the money for it. Exactly. Exactly. So we'll see. Um, I, I think <clears throat> it's going to come in that eighty dollar an acre range in that ballpark. If I was if I was a betting man, but. I don't know. Who knows? It's um, chemical companies uh, set their pricing according to what the markets can bear. And uh, um, but they never seem to think about the generics until they or, an, or another product that's going to fight them until it actually happens. So anyway. So, so Jason, just an example of what I do and why I have Trino on my trailer is I'll have my cell friend that goes out for my main grub control and then as we all do, we have customers that sign on later. And that's where that Chitrino came in for me. I use that as a my late grub app for people that signed up in July onto that. So I gave them a grub control. Well, I didn't give it to them. I charged them for a grub control. But then I also had it in my trailer, which I still have reserve if there was some type of breakthrough. So it comes, it, it works as a nice tool because you, know, you, you can't go out past, in my area, we don't go past really June 8th on a celeprin for that water solubility to get down to where it needs to be. I'm not an middle corporate guy, so I'm not going to go run some mixture combo of electus or whatever that's going out there if they're a late sell on. So I went to the liquid Trino and it worked It worked really, really well. Isn't it just a nice tool yeah. to have in your bag? Yeah, thank, yeah thanks for that. Um, and from <clears throat> what I gather, after you get that first season in, uh, that second year, of a celebrin uh, seems to be really kicking in and, and taking yeah. over at that point. It, it works really, really well. And, you know, what's your pressure like for grubs over there? Well, you know, I, I'd say it's about 50, 50. And to be honest with you on, on Bermuda grass in the prime of the growth season, it's unless you have just a horrible infestation, you really wouldn't notice it. Um, where you'll really see it around here is on fescue in the fall when the critters start coming out of the woods and start chewing yeah. into the grass. Um, they don't really mess up the Bermuda quite as much as they would on the fescue. So, um, like I said, it's, it's not such a problem where um, I would put that down as a blanket treatment for everybody, but um, it, it definitely is more noticeable on some of the fescue lawns. So, it without digging under the soil and checking it, it's hard to say i would just be going on some of the records that i've taken um where i've i've noted some of these issues where you know some of the critters come out of the woods and start digging in the grass you know looking for those you know grubs in the fall and stuff like that and right now there's only maybe a handful of my lawns that do that so you're you're different because you're dealing with a multitude of different grass species so you're more of a manager let's say than us on the east coast or cool season guys because you're always changing varieties if i were you and the way that you have to be attentive to the different varieties i would probably just be a chitrino guy and go after knowing my lawns that are in trouble and just time mm -hmm. it perfectly for them if the customer is willing to pay for it and right. i'm not sure in a seller print if your customers aren't willing to pay for it to invest in a jug of a silicone to have for the handful of customers that may take yeah. it. I could probably pull off that sale for maybe my top 25 to 30 customers. Um, but at the same time, I, I wouldn't even know that there would be that much more that I would, you know, be offered, you know, I just wouldn't need to offer that to some, to some of my customers. Um, and that's that's where I, I think just record keeping from season to season has come into play. Um, I've just I've logged where those lawns are. And like I said, I think it might be an issue of maybe 20, 20 customers tops. So I'm just kind of trying to decide like, well, maybe, you know, I don't I don't know if it would be in a celebrant type of season or like you said, Tetrino. But I, I almost think that once they they have that. I don't think they'd want to go off of it. 
uh, especially especially on fescue because you know if they start tearing that lawn up again in the fall after you've overseeded that <clears throat> is a whole new issue right so yeah that only happened on like two lawns where a, a fescue lawn got attacked by critters in the fall yeah i think you know, it's just going to be a, a management issue on your part and just see yeah. what is really going to work well in your market you know everyone is a little is going to be a little bit different us yeah. in the cool season it's a it's almost a mandatory app it definitely in connecticut it's a mandatory app because i mean we had major breakthrough this year the lawns yeah. that were not mine that were just smoked and you, yeah. you can't take that risk and customers yeah. don't want to take it that's something i'm starting to understand uh, a lot of difference between the the northern zones versus like our, kind of our transition zone in south um it may just be my area i'm not 100 percent certain but it, it just doesn't seem like a rub <laughs> issue is as big of a deal down here and we may have them they just don't affect warm season grass as much as they do fescue it very well could be that i need to do a lot more research on that but um yeah grub issues have never been a debilitating thing for me uh and i'm, I'm going to be starting my eighth season of applications so it's never been to the point where it's like okay let me rethink things like i said it's just a handful of lawns where it's like you know just a yeah. few have it. Yeah. All right. Any other questions that we can try to help you with with whatever little knowledge we have? We don't <laughs> want to keep everyone too late. So, I mean, some people it's early. I don't know what time it is in the Dominic. That's the only place I'm thinking about right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's party it time now. It's nine twenty. <laughs> oh, you're an hour ahead. No kidding. Yeah. It's party time now though. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Guys. Add, add something if um if we got a minute. Yeah. Um definitely knowing what's in the bag has helped me, you know, close a lot more deals with customers because knowing what is in the bag, explaining to the customer the difference between us and maybe some other people are hey, we're gonna give you a 50 pound bag worth of dry product that's all gonna be usable stuff. So the yep. difference between us and let's say a nationwide chain is going to be just that it's probably talking that and telling certain people that, you know, may pay more attention and are a little more tuned into their lawn than the average person. That's going to, that's going to trigger something in them. So I guess to have a little bit more confidence in you, what the product are, you can then justify, you know, maybe a higher cost, you know, cause we're always going to be higher than the true greens and the lawn doctors. You know, it just seems like that. And then the other thing that I had that I've seen to work, um, not only just explaining that type of stuff to customers was always specifying for me, the size of the property, the square footage, because I've gone up against, you know, some nationwide companies, perfect example. There was a guy, I give him a price. He tells me is that for the whole year is that the price per app? So well, that's the price per, said, that's the price per app. This, is, this isn't going to go well. Right. He's the price that. Per app. He goes, well, that's what I'm spending. And it was a nationwide company. Um, you know, that's what I'm spraying for the whole year. I'm like, well, geez, like, what's your, like, there's no way. He goes in his house, he brings out the sheet. He shows me they have his property measured at 4,000 square feet. Now, I measured it not only online, which you can see a clear view of the guy's property, and I walked it with a wheel, and I was in, like, I was within 600 square feet, right? It was 33,000 square feet. <laughs> so this company was giving him a price based on 4,000. Wow. So when I said I can give you a price based on four thousand square feet, I ended up being a dollar thirty three per app cheaper than when I, you know. But he ended up sticking with them because he realized somebody screwed up and he's getting a deal. Right. So that you know, knowing the size of the property, explain that so that people, if they're going to compare, you know, that they're comparing apples to apples, um, and then. And then no, explain what's in the bag. I mean, that's two things for me that have worked tremendously when it comes down to people that may want to sign up for services with us versus somebody else that just flat out might have been a little bit cheaper. Those are the two things that I've seen that have kind of put them over the edge and kind of made them sign up with us. A long hundred percent. I, I don't want to keep interrupting, but instead of telling them what, what I've done with customers is show them. So 
on the side, record yourself a little video of YouTube, something that you could put on your website that does the bag test with the dissolving. Yeah. Show the show show the granular being dissolved, your product, <laughs> everything dissolved, and then show the competitors granular mm-hmm. that's giving cheaper pricing and see and and the video can basically show. Look what they're giving you, rocks. I'm giving yeah. you complete complete lawn health. This is why we cost more. And you know, so you don't have to explain it every time. You just tell them, well, you know, I understand you're concerned about your price, but go check out a link on website as to why we cost more. And then they can see a quick video of you doing a quick mock-up of what it happens. You'll be amazed as to how people will be like, wow, I never knew that. Yeah. That's actually yeah. a good idea. That's actually a good idea. That's a really good idea, yeah. Instant sale. Like, they'll be like, wow, I never knew that. Like, I actually did some amend. Uh, so when I did my lawn aeration and uh, weeds, well, I did my aeration and overseeding. I decided to throw in some humic acids and stuff in granular form just to add some soil biology. I was like, I don't think I'm going to get a lot of people, but because it was a bit of an upcharge, but I did a little video and I showed them as to what it does to the soil and et cetera, et cetera. 80% of the clients signed on to it. Yeah. Why? Because they, they could touch it. They could see it. See it it makes yeah. sense. When they yep. hear you talk, they just think you're a salesperson. Although you're, we're passionate about what we do, so we kind of sound like a salesperson. They still think that, oh, he's just trying to sell me something because they're in that mindset. But when they see something like, oh, that makes sense. Game changer. So Yeah, it's actually a great idea. Listen up, Jessica, if you're out there. We need a new video. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. If that's everything, I don't like so we don't want to keep you much longer. We we definitely appreciate everyone jumping on. And Absolutely. obviously the, the two way conversation is awesome. We, it, Actually, there's more conversation than I thought we were going to have. You know, Doug and I were talking about that ahead of time. Like, what's it going to be? Is it just going to be speaking? But this is the go back and forth. This is great. I'd rather do it in person, but Zoom's an amazing thing. So we got this all done. Um, we are going to have this up on YouTube, so you will be able to revisit it. Um, I can send out a email with everyone's email on there right everything's been blind copied but if people are fine with that that way if you want to reach out to someone and you you heard something on on this and you want to talk to them and reach out to them and and build your network bigger and make sure obviously everyone get on each other's social media to to help each other along i can definitely do that after if, if that's okay with everyone yeah, yeah. Fine with me. awesome all right gentlemen douglas sign us off well not too much applicating going on right now, but wherever <laughs> everybody's at, you know, ho- hopefully we don't get bombarded with snow tomorrow, but I think we are here in the Northeast and uh, yeah. just everybody like, Hey, the spring's going to be here sooner. You know it. So take some time with your families right now. Enjoy it because we're going to be grinding really soon. That is the truth. All right, gentlemen, have a great evening. We will talk at you soon. Thank you so much for your time. All right, I got to go get the chicken's eggs. See you guys. (laughs) Let's go. See you guys.